last. I connected to my phone's hotspot. This shit grimy, nigga. Uh. Shit. Uh. Ever hear that whoop whoop? Followed by them cop lights. Running from the goof troop. It's gonna be a long night. I ain't rich, I'm just pissed like the all rights. 50 on the jeans, I ain't never had no off rights. I'ma make a stop in the city and hit the deli, cuz. These niggas trying to scheme on their mans, just like Melly was. I already got that shit for the low. Well, then set it up. The price went up 500 bucks. I need a better plug. I'm paranoid, he can't even come to the back. Go and run up, little nigga. I got one in my lap. One quick shh. Make your stomach a pack How you trap when you fronted you You fuck with the pack I ain't never robbed my plug Only yours nigga Disrespect me as a man Or it is for nigga Couple homies died this year I had to pour liquor Well the circle got smaller But the core bigger Stay away from them friends That you can't trust There's too many of them now yeah. In a world where police Will probably kill you with your hands up But while you laying on the ground yeah, I don't second guess it We can get it shaking like an epilepsy Yo, they better not speak, Ben and Jerry, they sweet PTSD and I been affected But you don't care cause my pen impresses It's that kid from the overlook that everybody overlook Talk about my life all night, I'm an open book Try and break bad habits, it's the same song Walking out into the storm, get you rained on Pain on, wash my blood until the pain's gone But can't wash my clothes until the stain's gone Well, if I'm unwelcome, I won't stay long Pop said don't shoot nobody, just pray for him yeah. Just pray for him If I'm unwelcome, I won't stay long Pop said don't shoot nobody, just pray for him Too bad, still I'm aim for him yeah. Yo, 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 welcome to another episode of The Cypher. I'm your host, as always, Andrew Kazir, the owner of Upstate Aesthetic, the main co-host of The Cypher. And I've got two other co-hosts with me, as always. I've got Anthony Cannon and Sheridan Crane. We just heard Anthony's latest track, um, Goof Troop. He just dropped that today as part of his spring cleaning series. And how you been? Man, I'm doing well, bro. Uh, today was a roller coaster of weather out here in upstate New York. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys know this, but we went from 85 degrees to thunderstorming to shit look like a hurricane to it was warm again. So I think that's summer if I've seen it. Um, I'm doing well. I'm glad to be here. Uh, got a good. We got 12 people tuning in right now. Shout out to everybody who checked it out. How you doing, Sheridan? I'm doing pretty well, pretty well. I'm finally back in uh, San Francisco, uh, actually for a short time. I'm going to be heading back to uh, New York this weekend. Uh, I just got my flights on Sunday, so I'm excited to be back home for the first time since moving out here. Um, okay, well, that's probably a good thing. Yeah, feeling. yeah. I haven't, I haven't seen my dad or my sister in a while. I haven't seen my homies in a while. Um, I've been I've been wanting to link with some of the, the artists that I've met while, while, uh, while here, even though they're still back home. Um yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited to be back home, and uh, I'll probably be there for a couple weeks. So I should be able to get some stuff done and see who I need to see, get back, get some more work done out here. So I hear you, bro. I mean, well, it's, it's been a decent week for hip-hop. We got, we got some shit to talk about, yeah, right? Yeah, that's a fact. Oh, for sure. The, the first topic is one that's really interesting to me because we could go a couple different ways just with the, the way that we talk about it. We have Drake. Top five. He tweeted this out or he mentioned it on some type of social media. He said, my top five is Biggie, Hove, Wayne, Young Tony and 3000. Uh, the, the Young Tony mention had a lot of people wondering if you're if you're not in tune with the whole Drake OVO situation, who the fuck is Young Tony? Um, that, that was it was definitely a question I had because he wasn't someone I had heard of, but I was intrigued to maybe check out some of his music. And he doesn't really have a lot of music out there as it is. Um, no, what were your guys' much. thoughts on this situation? Do you know the backstory on Young Tony? I don't actually know the backstory on Young Tony. Um, it's obviously somebody near and dear to Drake, or at least somebody that he's very familiar with and has heard something that we haven't. Um, I would say Young Tony specifically was a shocker. Um, everything else he said was almost like what he's supposed to say. I think Young Tony was... Young Tony and Wayne might be the only two that are actually in Drake's top five. 
I just think that he would get crucified saying anything else. Even three thousand? I feel like he does, he maybe, doesn't have maybe, to say three thousand. Maybe three thousand. The the interesting. I just thing feel like about, that, that's one he doesn't have to say. The interesting thing about this yeah. young Tony situation is apparently from and this goes back quite a few years. I looked up young Tony, and this goes back like 2016, 2013, 2010 even. He's apparently someone that people have speculated has been writing for Drake or is one of Drake's like main writers. He's known as OVO Hush. So they say that's because he gets the hush money to write for Drake. It, it's a very like conspiracy type thing. But at the same time, right after the Quentin Miller thing happened, um, people started really going in on this OVO hush situation just because they were saying you're, you're overlooking the real ghostwriter for Drake, the one who's really writing for Drake all the time. And so it's funny to me that is this a weird way of Drake trying to just assert himself within his top five without saying it? Oh, <laughs> That's actually a point that's that I never sh- thought of. I never thought about I, that. I feel I I could I feel like it's a stretch. I'm not saying it's impossible. Um, but I listen to like Young Tony on YouTube, and I feel like I mean, unless he, and I mean, maybe he's a really good writer for like other artists, but like what he writes is nothing like what Drake puts out. But that was just my observation. Oh. I thought he was dope, though. I mean, not top five dope, not top <laughs> 50 dope, but I thought he was no, dope. That, that's what I'm saying. Drake's obviously privy to something that we don't know. He He's heard whatever material Young Tony has out there that we haven't. Um, and to touch on your point about three stacks, I actually agree with you because I feel like the politically correct answer would have been Eminem over three stacks. Um, and yeah. I, think, I think three stacks is probably who he put over M uh, for that position. So I, I would have to question. I, and I, I, I think, feel like I don't uh, know. I feel like it's kind of weird for him not to put Kanye in there since Kanye kind of made most of his sound. If, if Drake put Kanye in his top five right there, would have broke the internet. I think it's would have called him no. the rest of his life. No, yeah, I agree. No, I agree. I just think it's funny that like with this situation, like I mean, in general, you know, I mean, I not you know, I know that. Kanye is at least within Drake's top three influences because that's eight oh eight. is his whole sound. Eight oh eight and heartbreak is his whole. But, whole but sound. if you if you listen to, if you if you listen to Drake speak, so is Pusha T. Like <laughs> you feel me? That's true. Like so, there's a lot of people that Drake had no ch- he couldn't say. They're already off bat. He just there's just no chance. If he would have said Kanye, maybe people would have took that as like one of his famous subs. Or like sneak disses, you feel me? But I think for the most part, he would have got crucified. Yeah, no, I'm not saying he should have. I just think it's funny that I, I just think the situation is funny. I hear you. I, hear you. I, I think it's interesting too, like the fact that M's not on the list. No one really disputed that either. That that is often a, a situation with people where they're like, "Well, how could you keep this person or this person out of this top five? And I'm sure there were people who were complaining about it, but it it, it seemed like. The biggest thing people were talking about with this was the young Tony situation, and did Drake just put it there as a situation to try and get people talking about whoever this person is? Or And I, I really don't know. I think that it probably has some type of credence with young Tony writing for Drake, and then that's kind of where Drake gets this idea from because this has been a guy. It's been a guy who's apparently been ri- rolling with Drake w- uh, from Toronto and stuff for a long time. So that relationship being there, it's just funny. Bro. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this, and you guys can shoot it down if you want. But why would Drake give any more merit to anybody ghostwriting for him? Yeah, like, I agree. Why, why would he? Why would he put the spotlight on somebody for us to like for blogs to speculate yeah. more? About and I almost, I almost I wonder if it was like better. like a tongue in cheek type of thing. Like even even if it's not. Even if he doesn't really write for him, it's more or less like a sarcastic way of being like, haha, you guys think this guy writes for me and you would put me in your top five. Like, who knows what Drake is thinking? But he's so calculated and thinks of stuff in such a creative way that I, I like, who knows? But it. it what if, what if young, young Tony could be dropping a project next yeah. month and this could be a way to blow his name up real quick for the, for the whole world? You feel me? Because if he did, I would check it out because of this situation. I probably wouldn't have checked it was wouldn't have checked for it before, but now because of Drake, yeah. Who 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 wouldn't check it out? You Drake's top five. You you look at the company he put him next to, bro. Like anybody who hears this would check it out if he dropped a pro- he would drop he should drop something right now. If if he was smart, he'd drop something right now. 
Yeah, no doubt. If, especially if that was his his goal or in in making music. And that's the weird thing too is you go you can't find Young Tony music on Spotify. There's some young kid you named Young Tony on Spotify who definitely got like a couple thousand plays because people didn't know what they were looking for and were looking for this Young Tony that Drake named and found some kid on Spotify. Like that that's, the, that's guys, funny to me. Did you guys listen to his stuff on YouTube at all? One track. I was- I, yeah, I, I listened to one track, and um, I already knew of one track. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Um, like, a, my brother, who's in prison right now, showed me him a while back. Um, I didn't know that he was associated with Drake, though. I never looked into him. Yeah, I'd never heard of him before this. It, um, it's definitely an interesting top five, that's for sure. Yeah. Like, yeah, like sure. with just because of the inclusion of Young Tony, I think you take Young Tony out and throw in an Eminem or even a Kanye. Like people would be talking if Drake put Kanye in his top five, but it wouldn't be a disputed top five. It would be talked about for a whole different reason. But this guy being in there, it, it creates a whole different conversation than you get with most top five conversations. I, I gotta agree with that. Um, and did he specify whether this was top five best or greatest? Nah, it was just a situation of my top five because nobody okay. asked. I don't know exactly what he was commenting on. It was some Instagram um, post that he was mentioned in or something, and then he gave his top five list. Boom! I got, I got you, bro. I wasn't, I wasn't sure on that either. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting thing. I'm also very interested in our next topic. This is something that's going to be very interesting for all people of New York. Um, we're getting Pop Smoke's post, uh, posthumous album um, in June. June 16th, I believe, is the date. June 12th, I'm wrong. Uh, June 12th, that's coming relatively quick. Um, it's something that people, especially from New York, are looking forward to. But do you think it's a little early? Uh, it depends. Um, I, I, it being so early to me means one of two things. It means either they think the hype about Pop Smoke will die down if they don't capitalize off it now. Or it means that he was very, very close to a finished album already, um, and they just had to tweak a couple of things. That's what that's that's how I interpret it. I am hyped for the album, nonetheless. Absolutely, I think that's... it's the first one. I'm, I, I, I think that, that's the business side of it. I would I would probably go with that side, but I wouldn't be surprised if he had an album ready to go. Bro, but the last album he put out was like twenty songs. Yeah. And it had hell of he put hell of features on You can make a song if you're pop smoke. He, he does that in his sleep, bro. He could do that 20, 20 times over again. Yeah, but with all those, but he had all those features too, or they're just throwing all those features on it now. But, uh, I I didn't even see the track list to be honest. Well, no, no, I I haven't seen the track list either either. But what I'm saying on the last on the last album. He had hell of features, bro. And you know that, like, to make this shit pop, it's going to have to have... Like, so, like, you know if this was his debut album, he would have some crazy features on it for his debut album. So, like, why why would he have given away a lot of those features on his last album if it was already going to be almost done for his next album? I feel like there's no way he was almost done with... I, I would be surprised. I hope it's great. If you're I tuning in great. right now, I want to hear your guys' opinion. Comment and comment and tell us what you think about Pop Smoke's album. Do you think it's too early? Do you think it's just a cash grab? Um, I'm interested in what people think about that. It definitely feels a little early to me, especially just because his his project that you're talking about, didn't it drop like two weeks before he passed? It was relatively close to the time that yeah, he passed. Yeah, he had just like, dropped that. He right was just, dropped that. Yeah. It was it, just, I think two weeks might have been a little soon, but it was close to that. Yeah, it was it was definitely maybe a month, month and a half, but it was right. It was shortly after the project had dropped, right as he had started really making a name for himself. And I'm sure he was like collaborating with some artists. But the the really shitty thing that comes with projects like this is they start throwing together features that either never would have happened or they happen in a weird way after someone passes. And you have to look at it like, oh, well, Pop wasn't would Pop have wanted to collaborate with this person or that person? So it's it's at least uh, reassuring that someone like 50 Cent is the one behind the executive production role. He's talked about how he's going to have maybe Roddy Rich as a feature. That's one that makes sense. Um, but also it still has a little bit of pop ties. But but there are other ties, like bigger names, that if they get associated with pop just to try and make this album 
go number one or get into the into the headlines. I I think that will be really the disappointing part about it. Um, I, I think. think it, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you can go. You can go. I was just going to say, features are going to be a big part of this, bro. Um, like I said, I haven't seen the track list. I'm not sure if it's public already, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if his label or whoever is in charge of this, like 50 Cent per se, reached out to the biggest in the game. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a baby feature, Drake maybe, like because the Drake and Pop Smoke, we've talked about that. It was supposed to happen, and it was almost inevitable. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if there was a Drake feature on this project at all. Um I wouldn't be surprised if there's a couple singers. Um, I'm not expecting the same Pop Smoke album we just got. I expect it to be slightly different. Um, whether that's for better More personal? Or worse, whether, yeah, I, I expect it to be a little bit personal. I'm not sure if that's naive of me, um, but that's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting that's what I hope. a slightly different sound, bro. I wouldn't say, ex- I wouldn't say expect, but I, I, that's what I hope. Yeah, well, I'm not. I don't. I don't expect one way or the other. But I, I hope he does get more personal because I. I feel like he has a type of sound. Like I listened to him, um, quite a bit before he died, and like I liked him. He was he was good, but like he wasn't somebody that I was gonna like just bump all the time. Have and you heard I, I gave, your freestyle? Yeah, that's what that's so, what I was about to get to. Is I, I after he died, I kind of di- like dipped more into his discography. Gave him some deeper listens, listened to his freestyles, and I was like, yo, if this dude, like, actually rapped, rapped, like, that shit would be crazy, because he can. Pop, Pop Smoke fell victim, and I'm going to say fell victim for lack of a better term. He fell victim to the trap that a lot of rappers fall into, especially on their come up. They find a sound, and it pops, and they need the whole world to gravitate to that sound before they can even switch. Because if it's working, why would you change it? You feel me? So I think Pop Smoke was capable of so much more than what we've seen. I agree. But he was he was just riding his lane out. You feel me? So you, you can hear the potential. Like anyone who knows music, anyone who knows uh, cadence, voice. Like he had so much potential. Absolutely. Yeah. He had a, he had a lot of potential, and I don't think he was gonna be complacent. I think he was just scratching the surface. I don't think he was New so York young or nothing. Yeah, exactly. Like I don't think he was the best so rapper. Young. York or nothing, but I think that he was he was really dope, and it's a shame. Um, I'm looking forward to the project, yeah. and I do think it's gonna be more banger oriented. But I'm expecting a personal song or two. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and uh, Thomas Moore mentioned it in the chat. He said that the New York sound is really what is blowing up right now. So it's hard to blame the business side for trying to get this project done right now. Um, especially during this pandemic, I wouldn't be surprised if Pop was alive to be putting together music and releasing something right now. So it doesn't it doesn't yeah. seem like like there have been some albums that have come out in the past, especially with so many young artists dying that in the last year or two, we've seen some projects that feel a little bit rushed or not really taken care of the right way. The good thing is that Pop did have a good team around him and like the right people who did business for him. So I don't see them necessarily doing him wrong. And I think this project will be a really good project, a really impressive one, and and have some interesting features. I just hope they're ones that, like I said, make sense. You said Drake. That still makes sense to me. But, like, pulling a random, like, and this is very random, a Post Malone, an Eminem, these superstar guys to try and get, and that's more or less what I'm saying. That and I They they wouldn't do that, like, I think that it's happened though with no people chance? who have passed, and but, like but like the Lil Wayne X, X record, that that one is one that sticks out to me in well, terms the X of X and Lil Peep record. Like, but I think I think Lil Wayne and X would have eventually made a song together. That's I agree with that. I, I think that they wanted to make that happen. It was rushed and it didn't come out the way it should have. But if they fuck up Pop Smoke's sound in a bad way, I like I think there's too much lying on it like that. All right. they have to do is drop something as good or similar to what it has to what he's brought out before, bro. I think that if there's that much risk involved in changing a sound, they wouldn't even drop it. You feel me? If, if they didn't have something quality, I don't think they would have put it out. I can guarantee you, you won't see an Eminem or Post Malone feature on this. I, 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 I hope you're I, right. I, I think it's unlikely, but, not, but yeah, for sure. Well, I could, like I, I said, he's it. got the right type of team. He had the right type of team around him, and with someone like Fifty Cent doing it, I I do think that it would be in the right hands and and taken care of the right way. But again, with with Fifty Cent doing the executive producing, you never your your Eminem <laughs> statement might not be 
to be so certain. You never know. Because if 50 is yeah. really doing executive producing, I don't, I, again, I don't expect it. I think it, it is very, a, a super <laughs> stretch, but. Eminem has fucked up every fire mainstream feature he's got on with a black artist in the past <laughs> uh, year or two. And I don't even hate the verses as much as the public does. But general consensus is he's fucked up Boogie's track. He's fucked up Conway's track. You feel me? Like they, I don't think they're going to put Eminem on a track with this nigga, bro. I think 50 is more in tune with the hood than that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That's but, fair. And, and, and I can, uh, it's, bro, I mean, I could still see it. Like, I, I don't, I'm just not as sure as you, but I agree with you. Just because that's where the business side gets nasty with it all. And it, like I said, l there have been some albums, again, that have come out from artists who have died in the past that have well, been done really well. But there have been some that the business side of it just gets so, so gross. But uh, at, at that same time, those artists kind of had the wrong people navigating where their project was going to go. In this situation, I don't think that, that Pop has the wrong people navigating this project. If Pop had any music where in the cut where he was referring to possible demise or his like hinting at his death, yeah, that's, they're gonna go him, right at that. Oh yeah, they're going to attack that angle, bro, and it's gonna be pushed like, oh, I, he predicted his death, um, some shit like that. You feel me? Like that? I think that people are really get used to pushing that narrative, mm -hmm. and Pop strikes me as somebody that has a lot of that music in the cut. Yeah. Absolutely, it, it definitely the, is. It, Go ahead, Sheridan. I just wanted to go back. The one thing I wanted to say is, like, I this is going way back. I agree with uh, the fact that X probably would have worked with Lil Wayne eventually. The record that stands out to me is the record that X and Lil Peep did together. Well, they didn't do together. That was originally a Lil Peep song that he did with McConan. They took McConan off of it originally put through X on it, kind of like a weird part of X, like just not very much of X's vocal. And they just kind of threw it together and it wasn't even really a song. And most people who knew Lil Peep said that Lil Peep was like, didn't like X and was against X for like, <laughs> his violence towards women and stuff like that. Um, so that definitely... that's, that's kind of like the song that I think of that like people throw shit together and it's like, it's not okay. And like with X, they continue to milk that shit. With Peep, his mom has kind of taken over. And like the second record he put out was like what he would have wanted to put out or what his mom thought he would have wanted to put out. Um, but it's sad. I, th I just wanted to point out how sad it is. It definitely. With X's music. It definitely falls into the category, like I said, of, of which what people are, are taking care of your music after you pass and, and how they're taking care of it. And fortunately, like I said, I think this pop album is going to be really good because of the right people are taking care yeah. of it and are navigating this project. So it's one I'm definitely looking forward to. And I hope that we do get like a Drake feature because we talked about it when we talked about Drake's project. That's a that's a song I want to hear, a collaboration I want to hear between the two of them. And hopefully Drake was leading us up to that and will lend his sound to this project. Um, this next The next project we're going to talk about is someone that Drake has lended his sound to plenty of times. He and Future have worked on many projects together. But the one, the, before we talk about Future's project, I want to talk about what he did yesterday. I'm not sure if you guys know or anyone who's watching know. But Future went through this whole situation where he, he, puts, he, he leaked a track, um, quote unquote, leaked a track that he put out <laughs> that he has with Little Uzi Vert off of the project. But in order to find it, you had to go through something like 149 different websites, click the different links. Uh, after the first couple people did it, the, tr the song was easy to find online, but it was still cool. The, I think it was an interesting way to give your fans a piece of your project, but make them work yeah. for it and, and, and make people start talking about it. Yeah, I thought that, I thought that was a smart <laughs> idea. Um, and, like, I, didn't, I honestly, like... I'm a future fan, but I didn't even really know he was about to be dropping a project until he did that. <laughs> so, like, that's kind of what I think worked for a lot of people. That that the, that was the exact same situation with me. I had no idea he had a project coming. I had no idea to even be looking for future leaks. And then I saw a headline about this, and I was like, "Oh, that's cool. Let's let's talk about it because it is it's an interesting thing for an artist to do." I mean, it's a, it, it is interesting, and I'm not sure if it's necessarily innovative. I've heard things uh, close to this, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if more artists start doing something along yeah. the lines. You feel me? Um, they got to get creative. 
Exactly. You got to get creative, especially in the quarantine times. Um, Future has a large enough fan base um, where he's going to drop a project and it'll get listened to. Um, but for it to get to the next level, I think it has to be good or it needs to <coughs> give it that extra push. Um, for this to get carried on past a week, uh, I think he needs more than a single or two. Um, and from what Sheridan says, it's one of his best projects. I'm not a Future fan. I've ran through um, multiple songs off the project one time. Um, I, I, I wasn't. I wasn't mad. I, I didn't hate it. You feel me? But nothing struck me. I didn't like anything that I heard really, um, per se. Um, like I wasn't mad listening to it at all. But I probably won't listen to, to it again. I want to clarify. I don't think it's one of his best projects. Maybe one of his best studio albums. I think Future is better. Uh, he has better mixtapes than he has studio albums. But um, what I said was. <laughs> It's the best that he's put out since probably 2016, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I know, like, like uh, Process uh, argued with me a little bit about this. Uh, I think Purple Rain is uh, the last really great project he put out. Um, Process likes Evol. Um, I'm not a big Evol fan. Uh, my favorite future project is Monster. It's a it's a one of his mixtapes, and my second favorite is Fifty Six Nights. Um, but I thought this project in general, uh, there were like probably six songs that I thought were at, like really really great songs, and the the rest I I just, just liked. Like I thought that this was a overall a solid project. Um, I, it didn't like blow me away, uh, but. <sighs> It definitely was refreshing for future when I like the wizard, I guess the wizard was okay. Um, but the last couple projects before that were not good at all. I didn't like Hendrix. I didn't like his self-titled project. I liked mask off and like one other song off of it, but, uh, yeah. Like, yeah uh, clearly future has bangers. I'd be dumb to say that there aren't songs of future that I can listen to and get some type of, I guess just like casually listen to. Um, but when people revere Future as some sort of uh, anything but a groundbreaker and like innovative for a sound, um, I, I, I never saw how prolific he truly was besides for the amount of music he puts out um, and the influence he's had on the game. You feel me? I've, I, I, I like a lot of people that are clones of Future at least took off his sound um, that, that I personally just enjoy more. Um, Similar to A Boogie, you feel me? But I think a lot of people have taken Future and Young Thug's sound and not necessarily did it better, but made it resonate more with me, per se. Yeah, Future's, Future's definitely been someone that I could say I didn't necessarily get for a long period of time. Um, I, I've listened, I'll listen to his features. If he's featured on someone or on a project that I like, I, I'll listen to that. I've, I've never sat down and listened to a future project from front to back just because it wasn't something that necessarily piqued my interest. But that said, going into this project, being the first future project I listened to from front to back, at first I was, I was a little bit bummed out because it was 70 minutes long and I hate, I hate, like projects that are long are fine, but there is a point where like an hour and 10 minutes, for something I'm not necessarily super into, I'm like, fuck, this is going to take a long time. Um, but that said, the project was good. There were some tracks that really stood out to me. The one with Meek definitely stood out to me. It was one that yeah, I really sure. enjoyed. Um, and it, it was it was refreshing to find myself enjoying Future because I thought I would be a lot more in the lane of Ant where I would be ready to shut every track off. They weren't bad. And it was there were a couple of points where... like. And it, it almost changed up. Like the life is points. well, well, yeah. And then when it played, life is when you get into life is good. It almost feels like we're in a whole different project for a second. I thought yeah. I thought I finished the project and like a random song had played after it, and I was like, oh wait, no, Drake is on this project. Like, and, and it, it's a good song, but it feels weird well, so, in its positioning on the track on the project. So starting with life is good, all the songs under life is good dropped before. The project, the rest of the project dropped. Like okay. all those were either singles or dropped like right before. Um, so I had heard all those and I, I liked those. Um, the ones that stood out to me were the one, the one with Lil Uzi that he leaked last night. Uh, my favorite one was one of the last tracks, Outer Space, Bit. That shit was fire. <laughs> uh, 
riding strikers is super fire when the beat changes that shit goes crazy um and i i like the uh the opening track trapped in the sun as well and i actually like i i haven't been a fan of travis scott lately but i I, what do you I mean? Like what do you Travis mean? Scott. What do you mean? You haven't been a fan of Travis Scott lately? Like define lately. Like my one of my favorite projects of all time. Like I'd say probably my top fifteen projects of all time is Birds in the Trap sing McKnight. That's my, like I love that shit. Um, and so since you ain't then, didn't fuck with Astro World. I did not fuck with Astro World. I actually surprised me because all the singles he had dropped before that and just collaborations I absolutely hated. They were garbage, in my opinion. Um, so Astro World, I was expecting to suck. I actually liked some of the sounds on there. There was I, I really liked uh, Yosemite. Um, okay. I was that was when I was a really big Gunna fan. Um, and there were a couple other songs that I thought had really good like sound design and like his vocals went hard, but. Other shit just bored the hell out of me. I just, um, I just think it's weird to say, like, uh, like to lose interest in Travis Scott unless you're getting bored of his sound because he's kind of evolving, in my opinion, and he's been on a hot streak lately. Um, Travis no, Scott... He, I, I agree in terms of, like commercial, like, commercial success. He's doing great. I just, in my <clears throat> opinion, his most artistic, personal, and fucking great album was birds in the trap sing mcknight i really liked rodeo too a lot of a lot of people like rodeo um from what i've heard i've, I've been listening to travis scott my introduction to him was his freshman cypher freestyle and he rapped he just he just literally rapped he was rapping with a, a lot of talented people as well he can so, rap bro that's why i like birds in the trap well when i when i checked out his music i, w- I was i, I wasn't a fan at first but i'm talking about like sophomore junior year you hear me travis scott is somebody um, that unlike a future, um, I've, I've found out what the hype is about. I'm not a huge Travis Scott fan, but I think he's an amazing artist. And every time I hear his music, I'm like, Jesus Christ. Um, and the fact that he does a lot of production on top of that is just mind blowing. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people, when, I, when they were describing him to me, called him the next Kanye. And that puts a target on your back immediately. Um, I want to say he's the next Kanye. He's Kanye's son. Yeah, he's Kanye's son. You hear me? Uh, so I think he's dope. I don't know exactly how we got to Travis Scott to be on. Oh, because he has a feature on the project. Yeah, and his feature sure. on the on the project I think is really good. good. Like I, I I mess with it, and and I think that Trav has been doing that a lot on the tracks that, that he's been featured on because he hasn't done he hasn't really done a whole lot since Astro World. He dropped that new new track. He did oh. the thing on Fortnite. So he has stayed out there, but I think all of his features have continued to it, like he he's kept his name out there in an okay way. It hasn't hurt him. His I mean, his his feature on Schoolboy Q's track was <laughs> awful. It was awful, in my opinion. Uh, highest in the room, the Scots, J Electronica's project, like- Fortnite. You feel me? Like after even after the projects, just the run that he's been on right now. You you may not like everything, but he's he's going him. He's going him. No, he's. I, I respect what he's doing for sure. I just, I, I guess I had an album that I loved and I like wanted him to continue to like build off of that sound. And then he went more of like a pop direction. And I just don't, I, I don't know. I, I like some of it and some of it I don't like as much. I hear you. I hear you. And I, I actually agree with you on a lot of that. Um, but I would just, when you said that you haven't been a fan of him recently, um, I just was confused because recently, if anything, I'm I'm becoming more and more of a fan of Travis Scott. Yeah, I was really I was really into him and like a lot of my me and my friends listened to him when I was like a junior and senior in high school, and that's when he dropped Birds in the Trap, and that had uh, that was the first Kid Cudi feature he had, um, and they kind of did a spin on Day and Night. Uh, uh, it's called Through the Late Night. And, like, just that whole project, it kind of t- told the story. He rapped his ass off on certain songs. It had my favorite beats he's ever had, uh, my favorite vocal performances he's had. Um, and I thought it was lyrically his best project. Um, I thought Astro Astroworld uh, might have had, like, better sound design, like, just with more wild shit going on. We got the um, question. Did you think Astro World was overrated? Yeah, for sure. That's 100%. see, I'm definitely one of the people who was overrating it then, because to me, like 
that's that's one of those that's the project actually that really put me on to listening to Travis Scott's music more. I know I pro- like I know that I had missed out on the previous stuff, but a lot of that stuff just didn't resonate with me. I had tried listening to um, the Birds in the Trap sing McKnight a couple times just because it has such a great high praise for it online, especially. But it did it didn't really do a whole lot for me. Astro World is was a was a project and and sort of just the concept and the theme of it is what brought me into really enjoying Travis and and now checking everything he does and enjoying that too. I'm going to have <clears throat> I'm going to have to agree with you on that, bro. Astro World is definitely the project. I think most people would. I think like I, mean, I have the unpopular opinion. Yeah, you you might you might I'm not I'm not privy to what a lot of people think about Travis Scott's projects. Um besides that Rodeo is high up there. I saw Astro World get a lot of hate as much as the love, um, but I saw Travis Scott perform in Syracuse a couple years ago, and at this point, I wasn't even really so excited. I, I wasn't excited for it. You feel me? I wasn't a Travis Scott fan. It was pre Astro World. Um, I've been told that he's one of the best performers in the game. Uh, I've known I know twenty Travis Scott songs at this point. He's he's bumped at every party I go to, so I'm just not feeling it. Um, he, he put on a great show. I, I, I didn't really like the music. He played everything from the jump of his career to what was current at the time. He even did a freestyle. The freestyle was my favorite part about the show. When Astroworld dropped, I was like, damn, son. I, I, really, under, I really underestimated homie. Um, and uh, I don't know what his ceiling is at this point. Because you don't put him as one of the best rappers in the game. Um, and he's such a different entertainer than Drake. Um, and that, like, I don't know who you compare Travis Scott to. He's an artist that I can comfortably say is sitting in his own lane right now. And he's definitely sure. trying to like craft that lane a little bit. Um, Ryan mentioned the Jack Boys project that I totally forgot about. Uh, that was garbage. I, I heard I heard bits and pieces of it, but it wasn't something I kind of would. I, I wouldn't say garbage because I didn't listen to it enough to judge it. But it didn't do enough to pull me into want to listen to it. It was a it was a compilation project from a bunch of talented individuals um, that aren't the best artists. Like Don Tolliver's really dope. Sheck West is dope. Um, I'm I'm forgetting a couple of the other names oh. off the top of my head, but I I enjoyed um, many of the singles. It's just when you listen to the project front to back, it's not it's not supposed to hit you like an album does. Um, I could see how people might think it was sloppily put together, but there's actually a couple of songs that I could still bump to this day. To be honest, there was one song that hit, and I don't even remember the name. And Don Tolliver carried it. Um, I think Don Tolliver's cool. I liked his album that he put out. I, I, um, I think I think Shaq West is mostly poop. Uh, I think um, Mo Shaq, Bamba was. I, I don't like Shaq West either, but a lot of people love him, um, and I've heard things that I enjoy from him. So I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. I'm. I also. I <coughs> want to say, um, I've read certain shit about Mo Bamba. I'm not gonna like get into it because I don't want to talk about Mo Bamba. But you guys should look into Mo Bamba and just like domestic abuse. That's all I'm saying. What the fuck? How did Mo Bamba, the basketball player, or the song? Nah, or not Mo Bamba. I'm high. No, so. I, Jack West. Jack yeah, West. I was I was a little thrown off for a second. He's a great basketball player. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I met Shaq West. Uh, let's just let's just skip this topic. Absolutely. Before we do get <laughs> to the end of the Travis Scott topic, though, I want I realized that someone commented and and pointed it out to me. I know exactly why Sheridan has a problem with Astro World because it dropped the same day as Swimming and took all of the recognition <laughs> from Swimming at the time. And and I understand nah, nah, that. No, I no, that was gonna happen. It, it resonates deep within you, Sheridan. I understand. I, I'm a Big Mac fan too, bro. <laughs> Um, I knew that was going to happen, though. I no, no, was I, I, that was, that was, even Mac knew that. And I think I've seen something on social media at one point where Mac had sent love to Trav about the project just because he had the same idea. So um, definitely, yeah. but but it's a fun thing to pick on you for. So that wraps yeah. up most of our mainstream discussion. Let's go ahead and start talking about the local artist. Uh, one we've talked about quite a few times, but he just released a track onto streaming services within the last couple of weeks, Ty Burst. Um, let's listen to his latest track. It's definitely a good one. I 
I know that they see me, make them like ZD, make it look easy. I pray that you need me, who in this quarantine now, only see me on TV. She need a time for herself, I need a time to get VVs. Bad bitches, bikinis, my league like Kiwi. How can I get this complete? Gotta do it completely. All the time, try to delete it, but shit got too deeply. In the back of my mind, I want it small like a fucking GP, but fuck it, cause we lost one. Mm-mm. I feel like I lost Take my robe, but fuck it, we gon' take more than one Type of nigga, probably take your wife or make your daughter come I know I'm nice, but so me nice, I be off for one Screaming, fuck the officer, you lucky we don't walk your son I got a wardrobe of fly shit and it cost a ton Fuck it with some molly on her mouth, so it don't cost me none We was taught to fight, track star, you was taught to run I don't feel like I'm okay, okay I don't feel like I'm okay, okay. In my face today, what I made today. You know I stayed the same. Spin move, step back, hit the fade away. I seen real niggas really fade away. I'm a lost one. I feel like a lost one. I feel like we lost. And that's the latest track from Ty Burst titled Lost Ones. What'd you guys think of that one? I liked it. Man, Ty Burst is so fire, bro. Um, and it's dope that we keep talking about him. And that's only because he keeps putting out music. Um, we wouldn't be able to talk about him if he wasn't consistently doing shit. I think that track, I like the song better than I like like that. Um, better than I like a couple of the tracks he's just dropped recently. He's had such fire production and such good consistency that it's it's just been dope to see, but that's actually one of my favorite tracks that he's dropped recently. Yeah, facts. You put that in the uh, uh, document for last week's episode, and I've been bumping it since, honestly. I've bumped it like probably 10 times since you put it in there. I like that song a lot. Um, I probably heard like 10 Ty Burst songs, and that's probably my favorite one. That's fire. That's fire. And, and he's been on a good run lately. Like, like Ant said, it, it's it's probably one of the better songs that he's dropped recently. But that's not to say his last ones have been lacking at all. They were all really good tracks with really good visuals with them. This one uh, probably just because of what's going on in the world, he's not able to record a music video to this one, so we just get the track right now. But still, that's good, and it's a really good track that people have to resonate for now. And if he decides to do what he usually does and make a dope music video to go with it, it'll just um, get the get the track coming back, you know what I mean? Nah, for sure. And uh, if anything, this is just an indication that he was heating up. Um, I think that the songs have been gradually getting better. This is just particularly a standout to me. Um, so if he can continue to push out better and better music, He's another artist that I don't that I don't know where his ceiling is. Um, as long as he keeps going, he'll be able to take himself wherever he wants. Absolutely, yeah, it's I just agree. a matter. It's he's one of those ones that you can you can feel. It's just a matter of time, the right circumstances, the right opportunities. That's all it's going to take for him to be elevated to the next level. Uh, and, and it wouldn't surprise me at all. Not at all. The next artist, the next artist we have to talk about is is someone that we've talked about quite a bit, but we haven't actually gotten to play one of his tracks. We've been able to talk about his influence on the artists around him within Dim One Three Six and all that. Um, this this being process, he finally dropped a new track. It's titled Ciclo Infinito. A little bit hard to pronounce, but it's it's definitely a bilingual track, and I really like it. So let's go ahead and play that one for everybody. Let's get that on a pop.
pero siempre te calento, nunca supe antes para ti. Olvídate de eso que hay de mí, yeah. Behind enemy lines, you're no enemy. But you're no friend of me, baby, well, what, what, now let me breathe. I had to be blinded, but baby, now I see, yeah. A las mujeres que he amado antes. That's the latest pro- uh, the latest track from Process, and he is someone that, to me, every time I listen to him, I feel like I continue to underrate him because he just is is consistently better every time I hear him. But I he because he works so much behind the scenes and doesn't make himself necessarily a focal point. I I, I somewhat forget about him, and not in a negative way because he's doing so much behind the scenes. But then when I hear something like this from him, I'm like, damn, he's good. No, bro. I mean. He's somebody that's a jack of all trades. Um, you can't really say I well, I've worked with process on numerous occasions. Um, we have everything except a track together. Um Goof Troop that dropped today, he actually engineered that. So shout out Ryan Process. Um that track specifically, um, I fucked with it. The production was crazy. He hit his pocket, he had a good melody on it. Um, it wasn't necessarily my favorite process track. Um, I'm going to bump it another couple times to see if I fuck with it like that. Um, I might put it in the playlist, um, but I know that he's capable of a lot. And if, if I know Ryan and that was just a single to heat up because he's got a lot in the vault. Yeah, that was a fire ass song. And I don't even know Ryan's vault like that, but I do know how good he is just because uh, I talked with him. I know his knowledge of music. Um, he's uh, if not my favorite, one of my favorite uh, engineers in Upstate. Uh, I really like uh, the way he does vocals. Um, I think he's a great producer, too. Um, I think this song is really awesome. Uh, I really like that he uh, did the uh, Spanish hook and then did uh, rap in English. And I thought just the mix was really cool. Um, in general, I think... I agree that Ryan's just going to keep getting better. And I think uh, we can all agree he's one of the more underrated artists in our area uh, from a vocal standpoint. I mean, from a from a general standpoint, um, I, I could put Ryan up against a lot of rappers bar for bar. I could put him against a lot of singers note for note. I could put him against any producer beat for beat. Mm-hmm. And I could put him against any engineer for mix for mix you feel me i so- just mean i think people know i i think people know how good of a producer and engineer he is um i just don't think people know how good of a rapper or singer he is yeah Here, they will though i That's- think i think uh i think to be underrated people have to know you and disrespect you you feel me i think mm-hmm. ryan is rated properly amongst anybody that knows He's just, I agree that I was an he's unknown. Just, yeah, him, yeah, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. You're right. And You're and right. his and and that's the thing too. You mentioned that he can really rap too. That's that's been the latest thing I think to really surprise me about him. Watching their their performance, Dim One Three Six performance with Live from Your Timeline. Uh, his performance was I was like he's not just singing like normal. He's in here spitting and really going. And, and and doing a really good job too, and it just impressed me. And I was like, he's so underrated. And it like pretty much by me, I'm saying underrated by me because I don't I I I don't know. I guess or I don't pay enough attention, or or it's just not out there yet because he does only have I believe one project out. And so he's him. He dropped a he dropped back to back projects. If oh I'm not- yes, yes, he did actually. You're right. 
Um, he and he's, but he's still he he and Dim One Three Six with their performance and everything they've done over the last couple of months. They've done a really good job at making me especially really anticipate their drop that they're going to come out with the project that like I believe there's a Dim One Three Six project. Um, Ryan has mentioned that he has he had a project about ready at least in terms of written down. He still needs to record it and get it put together. Uh, because the second I seen he said he had a project and I was like slide that and he was like well it's not done done but then but now just this single it, it's got me excited their performance it's got me excited so they've done it they've done a great job that's what you're supposed to do with a rollout uh, a thousand percent they're they're going ham right now um and as individual members and as a group um I'm looking forward to I actually I, I got some information that I'm not sure if is public so I'm looking forward to it, and you guys should be looking forward to it too, because they're about to turn up. Dim One Three Six is a uh, is going to have a very successful 2020. Absolutely, I, I, I wouldn't agree. be surprised at all just because of how how good of a run they've been on this far. Uh, the next track I'm going to play, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with him. He's pretty popular in the Syracuse area. He's got a couple of tracks on Spotify that I think have done like a million streams. Uh, he, he's named Sig Roy. He's got, he's got, he, he was, it's weird because it was something that was more or less a couple of years ago. We had a couple of tracks that really got on. His latest tracks are doing kind of relative numbers to the same numbers we're used to seeing in Upstate, which isn't a bad thing. But I'm just curious to see what you guys think of him, if you've heard of him, and we'll talk about his latest track, Bougie. <laughs> Not usually Cheat up, I'm Gucci We in love, you Zeusy Brush my feet off cause I'm bougie uh. Take that, don't lose it uh. Way back, go stupid uh. See me, they fume it Money, power, I'm pursuing uh. I stress, not use me, cheat up, I'm Gucci In love, you Zussi, brush my feet off cause I'm bougie I'm Take that, don't lose it, way back, go stupid See me, they fuming, money power, I'm pursuing I, I want all, no lesson, yeah. break down, roll out western Say girl, who your best friend, looking, hope she get the message What you need, I got it, money turning profit Door me, they can't knock it, double dose inside my pocket Fuck Houston, I'm a problem, said go get I got him, working out and follow, ay. she sweet like Moscato, faded on a Monday, bottles just for funks, wait, ay. fucking if she let me, sorry baby, you can't get me, ay. I stress, not usually, cheat up, I'm Gucci, we in love, you Zeus, brush my feet off cause I'm Gucci, take that, don't lose it, uh. way back, go stupid, see me, they fuming, money power, I'm pursuing, we day count racks, right? relay, Bad too. I rap, spit fast too. So hot, my latitude's different. Got a new model, my mistress. Me and that money never distant. And I'm gon' ball like piston. So they wanna call, I don't listen. And I'm all Gucci, no sweating. Brand new Gucci just stepped in. I been in the kitchen, I'm prepping. Yeah. Keep, keep, keep a small circle around the boy in case they wash him. If we forget to fume and they round me for the problems. Deal with a whole lot of stress. Rappers gonna pay my whole rent, do a whole lot flex. That's the latest track from Sig Roy titled Bougie. I went ahead and threw that track in the comments for anybody looking for it. Uh, he He's good, man. And, and like I said, he's yeah, got a couple sorry. of tracks on Spotify. You'll see that have been streamed a couple million times. But then after that, it's literally like 10,000, 40,000. Within the relative, like, like like everyone else, kind of, and the, like I said, these these were tracks that got on a couple of years ago, I think, and a couple summers ago, and were really popular tracks within Syracuse and probably other places too, getting that many streams. But he's good, and it, it's just it's interesting to see how someone like we've talked about it before when you catch that that hot track early, and then it's hard to capitalize on it afterwards. I mean, I gotta I gotta say. I've heard the name before, but I can't sound familiar with homie's music, and that was a very pleasant surprise. Um, yeah, that was dope. I always but, bring those, always. Yeah, you, yeah, that's a fact. You good at scouting, bro. 
Um, did he send that in or did you find it? Nah, I, I, I found that he's someone I've touched base with a couple of times, but haven't worked with a whole lot. Uh, it's just, it's not, it's just some. it's hard to connect with some people, I guess. That's a fact. That's somebody that would be interested in having him up on the show, um, hearing what that His journey, dude, journey I would, yeah. is like, um, and what it's like to try to reach those numbers again. Um, Where'd you say he was from? Syracuse. Syracuse, yeah. Word. Um, so, so yeah, that's crazy. I haven't heard anybody in Cuse mention him. I haven't heard anybody in Ithaca mention him. Um, for him to have that quality music, because it wasn't just the lyrics, it wasn't just the melodies. Like it sounded industry standard, yeah. for, sonic wise. You feel me? Like that was that was a industry ready track, in my opinion. So good for Brody. Um, I'm gonna touch base with him soon. See if we can get him on the show. If not. What's good with a verse? Uh, I got to check him out. Everybody in the comments to check him out, too, if you're tuning in. He's somebody that upstate should praise. I can tell off bad. Absolutely. He's one of them ones that, that we got to embrace, like, not just because he's doing numbers, but because his music's good. Like, it, it's kind yeah. of almost sort of similar to the Tusi situation, but he's still around in Syracuse making good music. <laughs> like, I mean, I, I don't know when Tusi popped, but I, I have a hard time comparing this to Tusi. Um, presuming that he's still in Syracuse and that Tusi will never have another song that gets 10,000 views in his life. You feel me? That's um, fair. So That's if you want to compare this to the rise of Tusi, I would hear that. But I, I would still say it, it, it's different. Um, if, if homie's in Cuse right now, um, I, he, he's going to be he's going to be known in upstate very soon if he's not. Absolutely. He's got he's got 62 a uh, thousand monthly listeners. I mean, is his social media tagged on his uh in his bio? Uh, his name in the comments so people know how to spell it. All right, yeah. I threw that in the comments for everybody. Um, we will go ahead and get to our next track though that we have on the docket. This is one from Don Pablo. It's definitely one. That I'm interested to, to this oh, was good. Yeah. And I'm interested. Yes. It was actually suggested to us in our comments last week. So if you've got a suggestion for us, make sure you throw it in the comments because we'll be sure to Yo, play hold it. Up, hold up, hold up. Sigroy is white. Yeah. Yeah, bro. I was gonna no, say it, but I didn't wanna like white. I didn't wanna <laughs> He's white. I was gonna bro. say it. Yeah. I don't wanna nah, no way. Yeah. He he is in it's That's surprising, crazy. right? He's he's very talented, very talented. But despite talents like that, he he just has a very urban sound. So that was yeah. dope. That was dope. And and that you never know that could be something that sort of holds him back in the long run is that his sound doesn't necessarily match his aesthetic. Nah, that could, that I well, think Well, it'll that, help. It could help when you when you pop off and you can really get in front of those mainstream eyes. But I do think initially trying to get that rise it can be difficult. Shout out Sean, shout out K. Killy in the comments right now. But despite that, I think not to bring race into it like that, but white, white, white people, white artists that make good music uh, typically sell more and have more commercial success than their counterparts, at least in this type of lane. Um, I'm assuming he, he can do pop as well, not just hip hop. Um, so I think that he has everything going for him. I see the views that you're talking about. But, bro, Spotify is tricky with the plays. We don't know what plays his other songs have. This is just his popular section. So, I looked where he's getting plays. Most of his listeners are from Australia. Okay, okay. This is just a. This is just what's popular right now and what's getting played currently. So he might have amassed more views on other tracks. Right. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. And he's someone that we. You never know. We could very well see that rise come very quickly. Um, let's go ahead and play that Don Pablo track we were just setting up, though. It's definitely, like I said, one that we had suggested to us, and one I'm excited to hear what people think about it. Whoa. I don't jack it, I'm the king, but I'm real shit. And you better watch you fall with niggas be snitching and be on some talking my shit. shit. If I bust a shot, you see niggas is running quick. You Whoa. need an ounce or I'm talking my shit. With it. How you talk about it? I'm talking my shit. And if you beef and I pull up with a hundred clips. The baby made baby on baby, and I'm going Peter on Peter. These Whoa. niggas be subbing, that shit is a dub. I'ma start smacking niggas as soon as I see them. I'm just a youngest, sometimes I be bugging. Maybe I'm just mad because I ain't hit a spliff. Bitches Wait. turn friends after getting some dick. Then they Wait. buy some vodka and start getting lit. I'm talking my shit. You better walk with a grip if you trying to pop shit with 
with the kids See niggas in person, I put them on shirts Trying to find the bodies, they don't know where they went I put a Zan in my henny and dick in your tree and the telly, I'm fucking your bitch Rolling the split while she sucking my dick She eat like McDonald's, she loving this shit Then I pass it to my brother and shit She shouldn't have thought that I was loving this shit She her in public, I ain't hugging the bitch That bitch might have just been bugging the shit That shit is a shame We never playing the games, my nigga, this shit ain't 2K You niggas is fake Tough around some bitches just to get attention Can't talk with a gun in your face I always wanted a wraith I be killing any competition in my way How you tough but you fuck with the jakes Nigga what? Get the fuck on my face Buck 50 leave a cut on your face I'm walking funny cause the gun on my waist I see these niggas they got nothing to say He kisses a bitch after I bust on the face These niggas leaving me speechless When the teacher said we wouldn't be shit And I told all the principals eat dick Bunch of felons and killers I beat with And I'm getting high as a treetop I'm a young but I got the streets locked Talking hot, you ain't faster than these shots I just walk up the crib with like three blocks There's two on my hip and there's one in my sock You can't see through these sweats I'm feeling like Melly cause I got murder on my mind Your man just caught three in his chest And I've been valid, remind you of Cali Cause niggas been telling me that I'm the best When I drop the tape, you gon' hit a rest Spicy and official, moving like a ref I'm coming for next And my niggas coming up next Straight money, don't fuck with the checks You bustin' through the 80s, can't fuck with a tech We'll take all your shit until nothing is left I'm dumping the clip I cook Get crazy if I'm feeling wavy with a blunt in my lips. Robbers coming with the pump and the whip. You pussy niggas isn't fucking with this. I'm talking my shit. Pull up in a whip with a gun in it. I don't jack it. I'm the king, but I'm running shit. And you better watch it. That's the latest Don Pablo talking my shit. I believe it's one of the, one of his latest tracks. Um, it was one we got mentioned last week. I've also had someone mention it to me on Instagram this week. So it's definitely one that we had to get to. Uh, he's he's someone though that I'm admittedly unfamiliar with. So. Uh, you guys know a little bit more about Don Pablo than I do, correct? Yeah, so Sher- Sheridan's uh, from where he's from, so I'm going to let him talk on him first. Yeah, we we both uh, are from Cortland. Uh, I've known uh, – I know him as DJ. Uh, I've known DJ since he was, like, super young. Uh, he used to hang out with uh, one of my best friend, Nate's, little brother andrew when they were in elementary school and so when i would be hanging out with with nate uh he would be hanging out with andrew sometimes and uh we would we would fuck with each other we 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 would uh kind of talk shit to each other all the time but it was always friendly um so we've always known each other um uh we've always shown love to each other uh we both fuck with each other's music um and i think he's one of those guys that as long as he hangs out with the right people, uh, keeps working, um, he can really elevate his sound. And uh, once he finds his own, uh, he can he has a really high ceiling because he has uh, really the, the right voice uh, for the type of music he's making. And if I'm not mistaken, bro, is like 17, right? I, if that, yeah, like 17. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's probably 17, 18. I think he's 17. So despite having that natural deep voice, you feel me? Um, I've, I've, I've had the pleasure of just getting on to Don Pablo. <clears throat> Anybody that know me back in the day, Infamous, um, I used to go by Infamous and I had BBMG next to my name. Uh, Don Pablo is fucking with BBMG and YSC right now. Uh, Tom Macklin, that's his manager, to my knowledge, um, and Don, Don's got tracks with Bobby Nice. Um, he's, he's damn near blown up on SoundCloud con- considering this area. Um, he's somebody that I just started taking a deep dive into. Soon as I listened to two tracks by him, I knew I had to work with him. Um, so we got something in the tuck. I think that he really, really, really reminds me of Dave East. And yeah. some, some people might not hear it, um, but they will eventually. I think you got to hear it. The, the track that me and him have uh, that's going to come out, bro, I'm, I'm sitting here like, yo, like, how the fuck are you so young? Mm-hmm. Like, he has the poise on a track. He has yeah. the flow, the demeanor, the confidence. Like, I, he has something that I didn't learn to have until now and that I'm still learning to get, to be that's honest. That's his personality, bro. It, that, that, that's, that's his personality. You, you can tell. It comes out on a track very well. Um, So... I'm interested to see where he's at in five years. 
Like, like the way he talks in his songs is the way he talks in real life. Like that's like that is how, like when I have a conversation, that's how he talks to me. Excuse me, you got you got to stay in this music shit though. You can't be in the streets like that. No, there, there, there's very few successful gangsters that's actually rapping. You feel me? Um, that's a fact, so, and that's why I said hang out with the right people. And I've told him this I'm before. Not, you gotta do watch what you gotta do, but do what you gotta do, but just know that a lot of niggas gonna think you nice. And you gotta you gotta carry that weight on your back. With a lot of power comes great responsibility. Yeah. Um. So keep your head straight. And in five ten years, bro, we're gonna be having a completely different conversation. And he's he's insanely talented. The funny thing is, we're talking about five ten years. He'll be twenty two at that point. Like just really like, starting to find age, himself. Which is, which is gross to think about, bro. And, and yeah, it's just crazy. imagine him applying himself. He's already this good. You apply yourself at anything for five years, and you're gonna become much much better if not great at it um and so he's someone that the rise for him is going to be fun the growth we talk about a lot on this project that's going to be interesting to see because he's really talented he that's the first track i've heard from him but it's one that i'm i'm looking forward to what he's got coming next because he is he's really really good and it it was one of those ones that's caught me off guard every once in a while you like and it happens more often than not because there are really good artists upstate but it, it, every once in a while you play a track and you're like oh shit i gotta tune in to exactly what's going on here because this is dope and For from sure. the first couple seconds he's had my attention so and he he has that uh he has that combination of like comedy and realness you feel me that uh, that'll appeal to a larger demographic um and if i'm not mistaken he has a track that's either about to or already has passed a hundred thousand views on soundcloud um so shout out to young he's really putting in some work and the young kids like yeah i put him right there with saint kid in terms of success at that age yeah absolutely um the next the next artist we've got is someone that we've talked about before and we've definitely talked about his comedy and his music but this one is is a really good track it's from dustin it's titled no hook two and dustin's really really good and he's someone else that i haven't checked for enough i think just because every time i check for i check out his music i'm really impressed Yeah, ayy They wanna hate on the kid I was getting the bucks way before I was up in the womb I might put you in your tomb, bitch you just doomed All of my brothers, we really some goons I don't fucking noon, I'm high as the moon Better tune in cause the tape coming soon And I'm about to snap, put that on my mama I do this for you and the motherfucking commas I'm ripping the beat up, got stripes like Adidas I need me two coops called Serena and Venus Now they wanna meet us cause I'm steady sauce And the pack in the mail came from Cali to Boston Now I gotta move it, talk down to you stupid I only got time for my bitch and the music And if it ain't that, then I'm probably gonna lose it They died it forever, I just go and do it like Nike did, come and fight me, kids. You could really find me where my wifey is. Doing 96 and a 35. Got a dirty mind, I can't lie on shit. I'm making the moolah to stack for my daughter. I drip on the track like your boy with some water. You say you go hard, but I know I go harder. I got the plug yeah. like a motherfucking charger. Yeah. Shit got no hook, cause I really rap. Yeah. You say you bought it, but I know you cap. cap. Run down on me and my brody gon' clap. They still sleeping on me, wake up from the nap. That shit got no hook and HB made the beat. Just so you know it's some motherfucking heat. The 808, they just talk and they speak. I'm killing the game and I ain't reached my yeah. peak. I'ma go get it. For me and my brothers, I'm fucking a game and I don't need a rubber I go get the money, you say and you suffer That is the reason you ain't doing numbers I get the bag and I tumble and flip it I don't answer calls if it ain't about the digits I'm focused on commas, you focus on bitches You hit a devotion, you know that I'm driven I told my shit but they don't wanna listen Bitch, I'm like Jordan, you not even pippin' Look at my diamonds, the way that they glisten You cannot find me, I'm going on a mission Got them all hooked, you think I was fishing? They want me dead or laying in prison Fuck what you heard, you soft as a kitten I got three eyes, you don't get the vision This shit got no hook, cause I'm really Spittin', addicted to money and running up digits I'm always on my ground, I don't got no limit They throwin' shade, but my eyes steady glisten This shit got no hook, only filled with the bars I will not stop till I'm known as a star We been cooking, got the loudest cigars And we gon' make it to the top and the far, yeah and That's No Hook 2 by Dustin I, I like that track and I like what Dustin's got going for him You can definitely see room for improvement but he's still he's he's definitely not bad, and he, it kind of catches you by surprise because you might not expect it by looking at him or his cover art. You might for a second think you're not gonna get someone as talented as you get, but he's he's really good. And so, like I said, there's room for growth. Uh, yeah, there's there's room for growth, and he actually has a couple cover arts that I was impressed by. Um, like uh, he has some cartoon ones that are really dope. Despite, yeah. um, I think we've talked about Dustin on the on this podcast before and my biggest criticism of him 
is I just like him when he's being authentic to himself and talking about his story, um, what's near and dear to him, his come up and his rise, because that's yeah. the most captivating to me. I'm not, I'm not typically a fan of Dustin when he uh, does the uh, flexing and hard bars, but this track stood out to me in terms of quick punches, uh, proper yeah. flow. If it, just like uh, Evan, my boy Evan in the comments is saying, he just needs a better mix on that. Um, I think after we play a string of tracks, I think that was the third or fourth track we played by a local artist, and I think it was clearly the weakest mix out of all of them. Not to call them out like that and not to put anybody who mixed that on blast, but just in terms of quality, that was the weakest, the weakest mix out of all the tracks we just played. Um, so that's not doing it justice to Dustin. But for, for this track, I'll put this up there with like Fisher Price right below it. Um, and it's probably, it's probably top five Dustin tracks. Yeah, it's a really dope track, I think. And I agree with Anthony. I usually like uh, Dustin when he's uh, most personal. But in terms of his punchlines and stuff, I think it was really strong. And I do agree. It was the weakest mix uh, that we heard. But I've heard other songs that he's had good mix <laughs> time. So, um, and that's, that's the I tough thing wonder. sometimes when we listen to some of these tracks. You're like, man, you guys are going through the trouble of, of paying to get them on streaming services or, or, or what, whatever you're doing, paying to go record them, paying for all this stuff. Pay to get it mixed really good from the people in the area that you know mix really well. Put that, put forth what you need to put forth, so that way the music sounds as good as your as your talent. Because you're just you're just doing yourself a disservice. Because people people just won't tune in if it's mixed wrong. Because it just it, it's like a subconscious thing in some ways. It's something Richie talks about it on Lamer Flames all the time about the frequencies and how it affects people and 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 how there is a subconscious nature to it. Where if things just sound a little bit off, it might turn turn you off from checking out an artist at all. So it's something that. That does need to be taken seriously, and it, and and when you are listening to a bunch of artists from upstate, and it's consistently really good, and you get a mix like that, it it sets itself apart in a negative way, and that's not something you want. I I will say this: Dustin is, has never been somebody that's been afraid to invest in himself, yeah, or take the proper steps to to ensure that his sound is right. I know that he works with DMP a lot, and it could have been DMP that mixed that. If that was the case. That he's not there. He's doing what he has to do for the most part. Um, and DM, D, if if Donnell produced that, he's a better engineer than that. Um, it just didn't come out well on the song. So that's something that you have to figure out in the studio or before you release it. Like you have to listen to other songs and compare your sonics um, from artists in the similar area to you. You have to make sure that your shit is on par um, because you can you can have a beautiful song a great song, a, a song 10 times better than what Dustin just did would still not hit the same if it did not have a great mix behind it. Um, yet again, Evan just shouted Mixes out... Mixes everything. Uh, exactly. Uh, Evan just shouted out Doug Maddy. Uh, he mixes a bunch of Matthew Cornwell shit. He's mixing some tracks with me and Evan that are coming out soon. Uh, he's one of the best engineers I've ever heard and shook their hands. You feel me? And there's um, a, there's so many good on engineers upstate too that are that are there. And, and Doug is a, is a really good one. We we talk about Ryan process all the time. And there's there's just so many other ones too. It's very the people Brown, of upstate. Chai. The people of upstate are really fortunate. Like you hear Chai's a lot too. Like there's a lot of people who have really good mixes. Um, coming from upstate. So you just have to work with the right people. And sometimes it's just a matter of having the right chemistry with the right people. And you also, you have to give feedback. Um, yeah. one, thing, one thing that I've learned is that when the more hands-on you are in the mixing process, the better your song will be. Um, yeah. I sit down with my engineers now and I take all the skeletons and I say, I want this, I want that, take that off, put this here. Oh, let me redo that. You feel me? You have every, I, I say this all the time. Every suit is better tailor made. Um, you can't. There's no way around it. You feel me? Um, and I'm not saying that Dustin didn't do that. Um, I'm not. I'm not even trying to use him as the big example here. But in general, um, there's too many artists out here putting out quality music to not have a standard mix or to have your stuff sound worse than others. Because simply, there I can name a dozen artists in Upstate right now that. 
coming every two weeks, every three weeks, every month with great music, Absolutely. sounds interesting. You feel me? So the the competitive edge is too thick to put out shit like that. Without a doubt. Without a doubt, and but shout out to Dustin because he does he does do really good work, and he just it's kind of the the situation of where we go off onto a whole different tangent after playing a song. It's kind of a situation that happened there. Um, our next track we have is from an artist named Quez. I'm not super familiar with him. I don't know exactly where he's from, but this track is uh, "Me vs. the World." It's the title track off of the project he just dropped of the same name. So we'll go ahead and play that for everybody. Let's get it. Shit, I'm so cold. All of my niggas gripping pole. Gripping on pole walls. Smoking OG like it's in a dope. On my hip is a loaded gun. One false move, I'ma let it go. Both my brothers in on parole. Lost my father to a motorcycle. Fuck my thoughts, they be out of control. Fuck my thoughts, they be out of control. Like, whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. This is me versus the world. This is me versus the world. That's Me Versus The World off of Quez's latest project, Me Versus The World, the same title. Pretty easy to find. It, it's it, it's a pretty decent song. What do you guys think? The song was fire. Uh, the song was really dope, actually. Uh, his melodies were really dope. The, the words that he was saying were actually kind of sincere and genuine to him. I don't really know him, but I, it resonated with me. Um, a lot of songs that follow this kind of sound don't sit with me the same that this did. So this stood out. Um, I'm actually very impressed. I'm not familiar with Quez um, unless we met before. And if we did, then I'm sorry, but I don't think, I, I don't think we did. This is my introduction to him and I'm pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I liked it. I thought it was a cool track. Um, again, I thought, I thought the mix could have been a little bit better more. So I thought the, the, like, uh, the top top line vocals were pretty, mixed pretty well, but I thought the uh, uh, background vocals could have been mixed a little bit better to accompany uh, the top line a little bit. Um, but in general, I thought the lyrics, like Anthony said, were pretty personal, and I liked that. And it definitely, like I said in the comments, it gave me Juice World vibes, um, which I think is a good thing um, in a way uh, because Juice World's good. But um, I think once he i don't know uh how long he's been making music but no matter how long he's making been making music once he continues to do so and and works on his craft i think he'll find his own sound like anthony said um because i got a couple other I, I heard a couple other sounds in there a little bit of like uzi and uh, a couple other people that i can't remember uh but i thought in general uh it was a good start uh but i'd like to hear more no, absolutely. Um, definitely. I think, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, he definitely sounded like a couple of different artists sort of meshed together. That's why it's a little hard to figure out exactly who he sounds like. I've listened to a couple of his older projects um, they, that he released last year, and they were a little bit 
less serious, I think I would say. He, he's definitely, like, it's not a totally new direction, but it's definitely, like, mm-hmm. a more professional direction, I guess, or, like, a decided, okay, I'm going to make music in this style type of thing. And it, 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 it was a really good track, and the thing that I'll say about it is it's the first track on the project he just dropped. A lot of times, not every time, but sometimes upstate projects come out, and the first track is hard to get past, and then it's really hard to get into the rest of the album. So it's a good way to start the project because it wasn't necessarily a home run, but it was enough to make me want to keep listening and see what else he's got. Um, and I, I'll probably check out the whole project after this. If you're listening right now, yeah, I will too. and you're an artist and you make music, or if you tune in later and you make music, bro, and the intro to your album is probably the most important thing to your album. Like, it, it, besides for having a good body of work, the intro, nobody's going to get past it and want and be excited for the rest of your material if the intro isn't good. This 100% is an agree. example of that. Um, I didn't know this was the intro to a whole album. This was dope. I would, I, w- I would be excited to check out what's next in that case. You feel me? Me too. Um, the intro is supposed to captivate you and, and make you excited for what's to come next. So make sure that you sit there and contemplate if this is really worth it before you put it out. Cause it could really throw off your whole album release. Yeah, no, I agree that uh, that is an intro song. I think is uh, like I said, a good start. So I would definitely listen to the rest of the album. I'm I'm, I'm surprised though that that is an intro, even though it's a good song, and I'm not mad at that as an intro. It does sound like it could be a single off of an album. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to what the rest of the album sounds like now. Yeah, me too. What what do you, what do you do now? Yeah, and it will, and that's a, it's a good thing in a way. He does have to follow up with with other good tracks after that. But it's you always want to start off on the right foot, and that's the, exactly what I think he did here. And then, like I said, I think okay. listening to that track fully through a couple of times now, I'm probably gonna listen to the whole project just because it impressed me. Um, and it'll we'll see how the rest of the project goes if he changes it up a little bit. I think that's kind of an important thing because I couldn't listen to 10 to 12 versions of this song redone or even just this sound. But if, he, if he's got some versatility too, then this is a really, it could be a really good project. I agree. I, I will agree. check it out. I, I'm excited to check it out, actually. Absolutely. The, this, I don't know off the top of my head. I want to say maybe Oswego or Owego up in that area. He, he's one, one of the artists that's, <laughs> it, it, dude, it's. Yo, I'm not going to hold you. If he's from Owego, that's the first rapping ass nigga I've ever, I ever heard from Owego, though. So. So there's props a, to him. He a trendsetter. <laughs> there's a chance. I, I'm not sure. Like I said, they, they, a lot of people get scrambled up, especially that aren't directly <laughs> yeah. in the Ithaca, Binghamton area. But he's he's really good um, and someone worth checking out. Uh, the last track we've got to preview today, it's actually part of a music video. Richie just MBK Richie sent me this before we started our project, or before we started the podcast. Okay. Um, it's oh, titled, it? yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the music video to No Handouts, No Handouts off of his latest project, uh, Throwaways. It was an EP. He came on, did an interview with us, discussed the project. The project's finally out on streaming services. If you haven't checked it out, you have to. Ant's got a dope feature on there. There's some other really great songs on there. So this is a good one. Um, we're not able to play the music video, but we'll play the track, and then we'll discuss it. Really? Real, but they wasn't becoming crystal clear. I used to care, and I was fucking. I ain't got the time or the paper in my budget. I don't wanna kick it, and I don't wanna discuss it. Cause I don't never trust a nigga smooth. I'm smoking up that wool, hot, chilling with the crew, hot. Shit ain't nothing new. I had to calm it down like woo, so I had to shut it over, casting over, hit it two times. Then that shit was over. Word the drink, I got a new slot. They gon' be mad as fuck when I'm rich. No, they got it. Now they mad as fuck that I'm lit. 
The bottom crowded, made my way up out of this bitch. Bottom crowded, made my way up out of this bitch. Yeah. Ain't show no love, them niggas wanna see us man down. But I'm the man now. I seen that little bitch, she acting like a fan now. She won't get no handouts, we into them bands now. And I will never lay down. Been working for so long that I don't know another route. How you say you love me when you really used to doubt me? Especially when this was never ever really about me. That's why I need my chips for the dip. Need the cheese for the flip. Guapanese when I speak. She suck me up till I sleep. Keep me up for a week. So I'm good on the link. Lot of drip, no sink. Need a bag and sink. Uh, gotta get it any me. Uh, they was hating on me. Uh, they ain't sleeping on me. Uh, not believing in me. Uh, and that's no handouts by mbk richie like i said he just dropped the video for that within the last couple days so you if you haven't seen it yet check it out on youtube he collaborated with someone that I believe is from Syracuse, Trig the Ruler. He, he, he's someone that I've seen making music, so it was interesting to see that collaboration to make a music video. It's cool to see people do stuff in different lanes. I knew Trig made videos too, but it, it's cool also to see just two artists that I don't know upstate that work together, working together on something like that. So what do you guys think of the video, if you got a chance to see it or the track? The video was dope, um, and I was on the project, so of course I heard the track. Um, prior to the video dropping. I'm not sure if I'm being stupid right now or if I heard you correctly, but I just want to clarify that Trig isn't on the song. He was just a video guy. Yes. I'm not sure. Correct. Trig, it, Trig's no. the video guy. He did He did the visuals for it. Um, for the I video thought, I thought you were dropped. saying that you was a feature on it, so that's my fault. Um, MBK Richie is always somebody that impresses me. Trig is always a dope videographer. Um, it was my introduction to the feature artist. Um, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, it's dope to see MB, uh, MBK try other things. Um, I, I think that his bread and butter is obviously bar for bar, New York grimy feel. Let me let me try to do some uh, substantial concept lyrical shit. But when you can experiment and still thrive in other areas of music, that's when you know that you have the potential to have a very good career and have some sense of longevity you feel me he's not confined in a box and i think he proved that multiple times throughout this project this track in particularly it's not my favorite from the project but it definitely wasn't one that it's not a skip either um like depending on the mood i would definitely rock this um i'd show my friends so i'm i'm gonna I'm give them a good grade on the track Absolutely. Yeah, shout out, I mean, uh, sorry to cut you off, Sheridan, but shout out OTM yeah. Mir, the feature on the track. Um, Richie, Richie has a has a good circle of people working around him too. I agree that it's probably not my favorite Richie track, but him following it up with with such a good video, it helped the track. It, it enhanced the track because the visuals that they put together for it uh, go together really well with with the track itself. So Rich, Richie's always great. He's someone that I'm really glad that I've been able to connect with through this process because. He's, he's constantly working throughout everything and doing his Lame or Flame show. Shout out to them. Tune in every Thursday. Uh, he's doing this project. He's always working. He's working with artists like Ant and other people in Upstate, uh, constantly checking people out. I've seen he checked out Sheridan's project, gave him some feedback on that. Like, Richie's a really good dude, and then he's also a great artist. So I'm just glad that he's been someone I've been able to connect with throughout all of this. So far, um, Richie has struck me as one of the more professional artists out here not in terms of necessarily success or just oh i'm a different status but how he carries himself and treats his music he's very strategic with how he drops everything that he's ever dropped that i've heard top-notch sound quality bars are always there um and he, and he speaks with it with the etiquette he's always trying to do something to push his music so his sense of professionalism is something that i think a lot of people out here could admire Yeah, I agree. Um, I think that song, I agree with everyone, isn't my favorite Richie song. I like him uh, when he's rapping, but I think that this project's really cool. Like Anthony said, he's showing that he can go different lanes. And as much as I like when he's really rapping his ass off better than that, he still killed that. Um, uh, I don't know how much... I don't know how... What did you say? 
this opens up his female demographic and a, a, a younger, younger fan base. You feel That's me? a fact. I totally agree. I totally agree. Um, and I think he should continue to make music like that as much as like I'll like his other stuff. There's always going to be uh, a demographic for a certain type of music. And if you can do uh, music that appeals to different demographics, you'll be able to last much longer than someone who only has uh, like like one someone would say a one trick pony. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and this project was sort of a sense of him showing that he's not a one trick pony, but also getting the opportunity to casually try something new because it's not it's not like a full length. It's not something that he, he's taking very seriously or pushing super heavily. Yeah, he made a video for it. But other than that, it's not <coughs> something that it's it's essentially just a, a tester. Like, let's try out this stuff. Let's see what people think of this sound. Let's see who this hits with and who it doesn't hit with. And I think that track has been one of the standout ones for him in terms of people replaying it and listening to it and the performance of it. So I'm not surprised that there was a video for it. I mean, it's also, it's the project is also called Throwaways. You feel me? He specified that it's not an album full of songs that would have never came out. Um, but it was supposed to, this track fulfilled its exact purpose. Yes. Um, MBK Richie is somebody that, as a selfish fan, I always want to hear him rap to the best of his ability. Um, like I, 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 if he never did songs like these, I would never, I, I wouldn't care um, because I like the other shit so much more. Um, but I'm actually glad to see him step out of his bag and Me do. Too. Yeah, and it, it it sounded really good, and it's something I think that he feels a little bit better about too he he did a project called primetime where he definitely leaned more into a pop heavy bag and it was something very different for him and, and it was something he said he had taken the advice from people that he like he just it was it was at the advice of other people who had suggested try something new and it wasn't necessarily something i think that even he thought was very good but this track was really good while still trying something that is a little bit out of his normal bag, and it works for him, and it's smart to do it in this form, not a full-length project where then your fans have to go through this project. And, and that's, that's a way you can turn people off if you are trying something new and it's 15, 16 tracks. I mean, um, mm-hmm. there's a difference between trying something new and putting out a project that's completely experimental and testing the waters. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like when I was trying to come up with Blur, there was no way I was taking that direction change by myself. Um, I needed somebody like Meech to help me kind of bridge the gap. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that type of direction change for somebody, because I grow, I grew up in similar to MBK Richie in the sense that hip hop. What, what we base it off of, what we're in this shit for. I can tell from listening to him that he feels and holds his morals in a similar place as me. So when you try something as experimental as that and you go pop or for a mainstream sound, you really either have to not care what people think. It has to be fully experimental or you got to do it right. You got to do it right. Um, and I, I think he did a combination of both. I didn't hate it at all. Um, but I think he found out what his lane was right then and there. You feel mm-hmm. me? Oh yeah, he came back with he Richie season two, and that's a really good project, I think. And and he's just been building off of that. Bounce back crazy. Absolutely, and it, it's been a solid run for him up until this point. Like I said, he's doing so much stuff even in the middle of the pandemic, trying to keep himself out there, keep himself busy. Um, re- releasing this music, the music he dropped, the the video, and I'm sure he has other stuff lined up for when everything gets back to normal. So it, he uh, commends to him for just working. If you listening right now, I got a treat for you. Me, uh, MBK, Richie, and Alonzo Brun got a track coming soon. So looking watch forward out. to it. See? Oh, I'm, ready for that. I, I'm just looking forward to more Alonzo, man. I, I, he, we, we don't get to talk about him because he hasn't dropped anything super recent. I don't think, but. Every time he drops, I really enjoy him. And I enjoy how much he pisses people off, too. <laughs> uh, well, I love that. I, I think that if you're about it, next week when we do the podcast, I'd love to choose an Alonzo song and play a verse. If oh, you're for about sure. It. Absolutely. Just, just to get roses, because I, I don't know when the next time he's going to drop but that doesn't that shouldn't stop us from talking about him and showing him some love. Absolutely, for sure. So next week we're going to talk about uh, about Zo for sure. We'll probably get a couple other artists that we haven't been able to talk about because they haven't dropped anything new and just play some old stuff so that way we could talk about them. 
Because there, yeah. there are some people that we need to talk about that we just haven't been able to meet. I was just thinking about Meech. Um, he's Kelsey. someone. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe next week we'll, we'll do a little bit of a throwbacks. Not super throwbacks, but throwbacks. <laughs> Upstate throwbacks podcast. I uh, love that. For sure, for sure. Uh, I think we've covered everything we need to cover this week. Let's go ahead and talk about what you guys have coming in the pipeline or what Ant you just dropped um, for your spring cleaning series. Well, spring cleaning, I'm dropping a new track every two weeks. If you're tuning in, you might have heard Simple and Plain already. Today I dropped Goof Troop. It's a song that Saint Kid produced. It was 16-year-old in the game. This might be the first single. I think it's the first single I've dropped as Anthony Cannon that doesn't have a hook. Um, it's just straight bars. This is a direction that you can expect to see from me in the future. Um, this is a track that I recorded last year. I recorded Simple and Plain and Goof Troop in the same session. So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to get these tracks out to you. Goof Troop feedback has been excellent. Spring cleaning is really something that you guys seem to be excited for. So I'm just trying to get the word out more. And I can guarantee you, if this goes well, it'll be a recurring thing. Uh, I'm gonna drop a project. I'm gonna drop a song every two weeks until I drop a project, and you can expect that in the summertime. I'll get more details to you guys soon. Um, but besides that, follow me, Anthony Cannon, on all social medias, and I hope that you enjoyed the show. This was one of my favorite ones, just from enjoying it for myself personally. So. Appreciate yeah. you. Every, every week we seem to have that right. feeling. They, they they get better just in terms of conversation. Yeah, they always get so. better. Sheridan, what do you got going on besides heading home to New York? Um, Yeah, so I'm heading home to New York on, on Sunday. Uh, I'm trying to get some some alone time, some time to to really like do some work in my room and uh, get personal, uh, write some songs. I want to link with, with some guys like Dim136 and whoever else wants to get in the studio while I'm home. Um, and other than that, uh, I have a couple songs that I've worked on uh, that uh, I'm waiting on a final mix on. And then I'm going to put them in the system. I think you guys are going to like those. Uh, and other than that, just just be ready. Uh, you can find me on social media, Sheridan Carter with two R's on uh, Twitter uh, Sheridan Cartier on uh, Instagram, and that's it. You ready to get get away from that San Fran traffic, Sheridan? I hear him. Yeah, bro, <laughs> it's fucking crazy out here. I'm ready to go home. I <laughs> bet, tired. man. It's probably nice to get get away and get home for a little bit. Um, Upstate Aesthetic, we just started uh, rolling out our first pre-order for our first set of T-shirts. I uh, would really appreciate it. $20 for a shirt. They'll be shipping out in the next three to four weeks. Um, and we'll have plenty of merchandise coming down the line. It's something that I've been planning on getting set up, and I'm finally in a position where we can get it set up. I'm excited for that. Um, like I said, $20, shipping included, so it's really not a bad deal. It's a pretty sweet shirt. So and everything I've done for Upstate Aesthetic has been... I haven't I haven't charged anything. I've been asked that many times actually. How much for promo, this, that, and the third? I don't want to charge for promo. I don't I would I would much rather do everything how I do it and and this is a way that you can help support That's me and fun. help keep things going. So um like I said, upstateaesthetic.com. You can find a t shirt there. I've always got other things that I'm planning to do down the pipeline. I actually think I just thought of something pretty cool within the last five minutes. And so I, there's gonna be cool stuff coming from Upstate Aesthetic always. So make sure you stay tuned with all that. Until next Friday, that's the cipher for you guys. We always appreciate everybody tuning in. We had a bunch of people in the comments, a bunch of people shared, a bunch of people watched. So always appreciate it. Not Thank for you. real. Awesome. Like, uh, Thank you, guys. Hold on. I'm, I'm excited for that merch line, Andrew. I'm, I'm going to pre-order a shirt ASAP. Um, I got a couple things that I forgot to say. I noticed that Upstate Aesthetic is at 970 likes. So if everybody watching right now could like the page, if you haven't already, Let's get this man to a thousand. One K turn up right quick. My man Evan, Invite your friends to like it. Invite your friends to like it. Share the page because we're just trying to promote local hip hop. My man's is doing a beautiful thing right now, and I'm lucky that he included me. Sheridan probably feels the same way. I um, agree for sure. Evan in the comment section right now. We got two tracks on the way. Bro is commenting actively the whole time. Um he he was really involved in this, engaged the whole time, so I appreciate that. Can't wait to get to work out, brother. 
And Josh Higgins, if you guys know the Gunk Poets, one of the most OG hip hop groups out in the whole area, man. Somebody that really inspired me personally. Um, so I would love to get him on the show. Yeah, we're going to have to get him on, talk about Takashi, talk about <laughs> J. Cole. <laughs> get, him all, get him all riled up like an old man yelling at the clouds. Get a different type of perspective than we usually do. For um, sure. So I just wanted to hint at that and shout out those people. Let's get this on and popping, and I appreciate y'all for rocking with us. Absolutely. And we're going to play Ant's latest track and close out the show. Thank you guys for tuning in. Shit, cry me, nigga. Uh. Shit. Uh. Ever hear that whoop whoop? Followed by them cop lights. Running from the goof troop. It's gonna be a long night. I ain't rich, I'm just pissed like the all rights. 50 on the jeans, I ain't never had no off rights. I'ma make a stop in the city and hit the jelly cuz. These niggas trying to scheme on their mans, just like Melly was. I already got that shit for the low. Well, then set it up. The price when I'm filing it bust. I need a better plug. I'm paranoid, he can't even come to the back. Go and run up, little nigga. I got one in my lap. One quick shh. Make his stomach a bag How you trap when he fronted you You fuck with the pack I ain't never ride my plug Only yours, nigga Disrespect me as a man Or it is for nigga Couple homies died this year I had to pour liquor Well, the circle got smaller But the core bigger Stay away from them friends That you can't trust